All right, so now that we're all set and we've got uh, connects all put in and configured and everything, now we're going to start to make our migrations. And one way we can start doing that is using one of those awesome CLI tools that connects gives you. So how you start that is you say connects migrate colon make and then the name of the migration. So this one we're going to make um, create users and to do's tables. Normally you would put that into two, but you'll kind of see why it's a little bit of a pain. Um, so you'll see why I do that, but we'll go ahead and run that. So now if we look under my migrations or the under the migrations folder, we have this new file and it creates a migration for us, which is super cool. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, so we're going to say return, return connects dot schema dot create table and that takes two parameters the first parameter is the name of the table so we're going to call this table users and it's going to take a callback that has configure uh, config stuff having to do with the table so here now we're going to configure the table if we say table dot increments increments it's going to give us an ID field and it's actually going to give us a prime. It's also going to uh, put a primary key constraint on there as well. So we're going to leave that alone. Then we're going to go down and we're going to have a table dot string, which is going to have a, a column name of name. And then we're going to uh, make that not nullable. So that'll put the not null constraint on there. Next, we're going to say table dot email or sorry table dot string with a, uh, with a column name of email, and we'll also put that as not nullable. Um, and then we're going to uh, I'm going to put a table dot timestamp. And it's going to be called created at. And then we will say uh, default oops, default to. And then connects gives us uh, an easy ability to just put in the current time. So we say kenex.fn.now. And that'll put the current time in there. Uh, we're going to copy and paste this and make an updated uh, updated at as well updated at all right so we could actually write a second migration but I've found that it's just easier uh, with tables that are dependent on each other to just write them in the same migration that way you can uh, be very explicit about uh, the order in which the migrations run. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, say dot, so we can actually chain these methods and say dot create table, we'll say to do's, and then that function that has the table uh, parameter passed in, and then we'll take uh, this table dot increments. We'll put that down here. Then we'll say uh, table dot. Actually, you know what? We'll take these two also. And then we'll put those here. Uh, we'll take a or we'll get a table dot string for the title. Uh, we'll take a and actually we'll make that not null. Oops not nullable and we will say uh, table dot boolean for completed we'll also make that not nullable um, 
as well as defaults to false. It almost seems kind of redundant, but we'll leave it like this right now. Then we're going to create our uh, foreign key that's going to tie it to the user's table uh, by saying table.integer and we'll call that field user ID. We'll say that references the ID column in table users. So they actually make it really straightforward uh, to actually put these together. Um, and that's, so that's it for the running, uh, or, you know, running the migrations. Now, when we roll back, we have to use exports.down instead of exports.up. This is really easy. Uh, we just have to run return connects.schema.drop table to do's dot drop table users. And that's it. Now we have this all set up. Uh, we'll move on to the next video and we will do uh, seeds. See you in the next video.